Hi everyone, welcome to online study for you, one step solution for all your placement needs. I hope you all are doing extremely well and fine. So today in this video, we are going to share uh, or basically discuss the pseudo codes that were asked in Infosys. If you are preparing for the same, do watch the complete video. We'll be solving the questions along with the um, like techniques and strategies that will be followed for solving a particular question. So everything we are going to cover in depth and with proper explanation. So make sure to watch the complete video. So without any further delay, let's come to our first question. So here's our first question that what will be the output of the following pseudocode? Before proceeding further, let me tell you one thing that pseudocode will be easy only, right? It will be based on certain concepts like as bitwise operator or so. So if you have a proper understanding regarding them like loops, bitwise operator, some sort of data structure questions has also been asked related to stack and all. We are going to cover that as well. So just to clear the things with you, I have mentioned that particular thing. Okay, so here you can see two integers A as well as B is given to us where the value to A is provided as 50 and to B is provided is also 50. Now, before solving this question, let me tell you one thing that if you are having a number X and you are doing the bitwise end of X with itself, this is what? This is bitwise and don't confuse it with logical end, right? So Bitwise end is basically will be working with the bits of a number. So if we are have a number x and we are doing the bitwise end of x with itself, the result will be x always. So you can keep this in your mind. Let's understand with the help of an example. Suppose we have 3. What is the value of 3? What is the bitwise value of in bits? If you will say that, what is the value of 3? That is 1, 1. If you are doing 3 bitwise end with 3, you will be getting 3 itself. Let's see. 1, 1. So you know, if... Uh, you are having 1, you are doing 1 bitwise and with 1, the result will be 1 only, here also. So you can see you have got the same number. So we can use this technique for solving this particular question so that we can save our time. So A equal to, we have A bitwise and with B. So value of A is 50, value of B is also 50. 50 bitwise and with 50 will be giving you 50 itself. Then we have B equal to B bitwise and with 50. What is the value of B? 50. Bitwise and with 50 will be giving you 50 itself. Then we have A equal to A bitwise and with B. So A value is 50, 50 bitwise and with, and B is also 50. So it will be giving you nothing but 50 itself. And here also you can see we are doing just simply B bitwise and with 50. So what is the value of B? B value is 50 and bitwise and with 50 will give you 50 itself. So what will be the output? Output will be print A plus B. Though this will not come here. Print a plus B that is simply written here. So A value is 50 and B value is also 50. So 100 will be the correct answer for this question. So it's like questions will be easy. You should be aware of some small tricks and techniques. The, the one which I just mentioned. Right. So you can use them and you can save your time. Because obviously there is a particular time uh, under which we you have to solve the questions. Right. Let's come to our next question that what will be the output of the following pseudo code. So this is a pseudo code given to us. We have two integer i as well as a. Now we are taking one loop from i equal to 0 to 2. So this 2 simply means here is less than equal to 2. Right. Then we have another loop where we have for each j. So another loop inside it from j equal to 0 up to i. So 0 less than equal to i. So what will be the output? First of all, the value of i is 0. So here we'll be moving to the internal loop. j equal to 0. And we have um, 0 less than equal to 0 because i value is 0. So condition is to pray will be printed. Then j value will be incremented. 1 less than equal to 0. Condition will be false. Will be come out of the internal loop. Then i value will be what? 1. 1 less than equal to the condition is 2. So here instead of i will be having 1. 0 less than equal to 1 play will be printed then 1 less than equal to 1 play will be printed then here the i value will be updated to 2 2 less than equal to 2 the condition is still true now again we will be moving to the internal loop that is getting started from j equal to 0 to i i value is what this time 2 so 0 less than equal to 2 yeah the condition is true play will be printed then we have 1 less than equal to 2 the condition is true play will be printed then we have 2 less than equal to 2 so then uh, play will be printed and after this the condition will become false and even the outer loop condition will become false because i value will be 3 this time 3 less than equal to 2 condition is false okay so this is how it is going to work 
so how many times place been printed one two three four five six so this will be our output perhaps they will ask you the count of the play that how many times this play got printed so you can see this has been printed six times one two three four five six okay so i hope the question is pretty much clear to you so let's move to our next question the next question is from a linked list part that what is the second part of a node in a linked list that contains the address of the next node called so you know how our linked list looks like so uh let me draw it here okay so and none so this is how our linked list look like it uh, basically consists of certain nodes where a node consists of two fields one is data or information you can say and another one is pointer field now what is the use of this pointer field pointer field is basically used to store the address of next node you know that in a case of linked list we don't have the elements to be stored in a continuous memory allocation in a continuous memory allocation so how you will come to know where your next node has been stored so for this we use the pointer which can store the address and by using that address we can um, reach out to or we can reach out to a next node this is how we'll be um, helping this is how it is helping us right so they are simply asking that what is the second part of a node in a linked list that contains the address of the next node called so what it is called simply it is what pointer so option b will be the correct answer for this particular question let's proceed further so here we have what will be the output of the following pseudo code this is a pseudo code given now we have integers a b d where b has been initialized with 5 a has been initialized with 2 and d has been initialized with 2 thus we are simply checking b greater than a b value is what 5 uh, a value is 2 then this is logical end right this is logical end then a a value is what 2 2 greater than D, D values two. So you don't have to proceed further. You must be knowing that in case of and if all the cases are not true, the outcome will be false itself. In the case of logical and, if the if all the uh, cases are not true, the output will be false. So here you can see five greater than two. That is correct. But a greater than d, a values two, d values also two. So two greater than two, we cannot say this. If instead of this, it was like. Two greater than equal to two, then it was a correct case, um, right? But as of now, it is two greater than two, which is going to give you what false. So if any of the conditions is false, the overall result will be false in the case of logical end, right? So this if condition won't be executed. In the else part, we are simply updating the value of a as b plus one. So what is the value of b? What is the value of b? Five. Five plus one will be giving you six. Right, and at the last, simply we are printing a plus b plus d. So a value is six, b value is five, and d value is two. So six plus two, eight plus five, thirteen. So option B will be the correct answer for this question. Let's move to our next question now. So here is our next question. We are having three integers a, b, c, where a has been set to one, b has been set to four, c has been set to one. Now we are simply checking our if if condition. So if a minus one, a value is what? One. One minus one will be giving you what? Zero. Zero greater than. Okay. So this condition is true. No, right? This condition isn't true because we are we are simply checking zero greater than b plus five. So b value is four. Four plus five is going to give you nine, right? Four 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 plus five will be giving you nine. So zero greater than nine is this true? No, right? So we are not going to proceed in this particular loop. So. At the last, they have simply mentioned to print a plus b plus c. So a value is four plus one five plus one six. So six will be the correct answer for this question, as we are not going to move inside this if part. The condition is then true. So here is our next pseudo code that uh, there are three integers a, b, c. A value has been set to six, b value has been set to three, and c value has been set to zero. Now, while one one denotes true, it means the loop condition is true. One denotes true, so we are doing c equal to a minus b. A value is six, b value is three, so six minus three will be giving you three. Then a value we are updating as a that is the previous value of that is six plus c. C value is what now? That is three, right? So a value will be nothing but Nine. A value will be nothing but nine. Now we are simply checking if a greater than twenty-three. So a value is what nine is not greater than twenty-three. Okay. So else part will be executed where we are doing b equal to a minus b. So a value is what nine? Nine minus b. 
so b value the previous value b is what 3 so b value will be 6 this time right and again we are going to continue with the same do and here you can see uh, we are simply printing this b value as well so what will be printed 6 will be printed and again we are going to continue because this 1 is simply denoting true every time so c value we are again updating as a minus b so a value is what 9 b value is 6 so 9 minus 6 will be giving you what 3 then we are updating the value of a as a plus c so a value was what 9 plus c value is what now 3 so 9 plus c will be giving you 12 12 greater than 23 no right so we are going to update the value of b as a minus b so a value is what 12 now and b value is what what is the value of b that is 6 b value is what 6 so uh, from here you will be getting the value of b as 6 and here we are printing the value of b as well so 6 will be printed then again the condition is true like because we have put 1 here so again we are going to continue in the loop so c value again we are updating as a minus b so a value is what 12 and b value is what 6 so so what will be the value of c 6 this time and a value will be what 12 plus 6 that is 18 12 plus 6 that is 18 18 greater than 23 no right so else part will be executed we will be updating the value of b as a minus b so what is the value of a 18 what is the value of b what was the previous value of b that we took 6 it was 6 right it was 6 so p value will be what 12 so 12 will be printed again we will be moving in the loop itself so c value we are updating as now a minus b so what is the value of a what is the value of a 18 and what is the value of b now 12 so c value will be nothing but 6 again we are updating the value of a as a plus c so a value is 18 and c value is what 6 so we have a value as 24 this time so now this time if we will check that if a greater than 23 so what is the value of a 24 24 is greater than 23 yes the condition is true so we'll be simply jumping out of the loop so what will be the output of this particular code 6 6 12 that will be the correct answer for this particular pseudo code let's proceed further so this is what first of all this is zor operator let me give you a quick introduction of JOR operator so that it will be easy for you to solve these kind of questions. So in JOR operator, if the bits, okay, so this is also a bitwise operator first of all. So if the bits are dissimilar, like a 0, JOR with 1, the output will be 1. 1, JOR with 0, the output will be 1. If the bits are similar, like as this one, the output will be what? 0 itself. So here we are having three integers p, q as well as r. p value is 1, q value is 3 and r value is 1. So we are updating the value of p as p, v, p value we are updating is p is or with q. So 1 is or with 3 simply we are doing. So 3 value is what? 1, 1. You have to consider in bits, right? And p value is 1. So you can see the bits are similar here, right? So you'll be getting 0 and here the bits are dissimilar. So you'll be getting 1. 1, 0 is the binary value of which particular decimal number? Tell me guys. Uh, 2, right? So 2 will be the correct answer. So here we'll be getting 2. Then Q value we are updating as R. That is 1. Zor with Q. So again for this also you'll be getting the same thing, right? Because the value is same. 1 Zor with Q you'll be getting what? 2 itself. Right? I hope that there is no doubt in that particular part. Okay. Then we are updating the value of R as P ZOR with Q. So P value is 2. ZOR with, we are doing ZOR with 2 itself. We are doing ZOR with Q because Q value is also what? Q value is also what? 2. Now for this also let me tell you one thing. That if you are having two numbers, oh, sorry, that if you are having a number and you are doing ZOR, of the number with itself you will be getting zero as the answer for example here in this case if you will solve zero uh, what is the binary value of zero oh, sorry what is the binary value of two one zero one zero zor with one zero right because we are doing two zor with two this is will this will give you zero this will give you zero because the bits are similar so the output for r will be what zero at the last we are simply printing p plus q so p value is what p value is what two and q value is what two so 4 will be the correct answer right so 
in this case it's not even needed to evaluate r because we are not using r here right so we can reduce we can eliminate this particular step right so here is our next question let's see what we are what we have to do in this question so how many times will the loop execute you have to tell this particular thing so here we are having a for loop for well equal to zero and this will go up to less than equal to three right and you can see we are modifying the value of two into a value of well as two into well and we are Reducing the value of well, we are doing well minus minus, right? So initially the value of well will be what zero, right? So two into zero will be giving you zero itself. We are reducing the value of well, so that will be minus one. So you can see the like as we proceed in this particular loop, the value of well we are continuously reducing it, right? So it will be moving in the negative part, right? We are continuously reducing it. So this will result into what? This will result into negative values and this will result into infinite loop like this condition will uh, not be possible like zero less than equal to three this one this will result into us infinite loop so this will result into infinite loop infinite loop will be the correct answer for this particular question let's proceed further i hope you must have got the point that i was trying to explain so here we have a question consider a stack is so this is the stack right pop operation is performed until the stack becomes empty how many pop operations will be performed so let's suppose this is a stack right so it is having elements 1 8 2 1 1 8 2 1 2 2 3 so how many pop operations you have to perform to make this stack empty that is simply what they're asking so one two three four five six seven so you have to perform seven pop operations to make this stack empty right because how many elements are there one two three four five six seven elements are there so seven will be the correct answer for this particular question so these were some of the questions that were asked in infosys exam and like similar kind of questions were asked i'm not saying that exactly right so i hope that this kind of question will help you to get a sort of understanding and as if i told you the question will be easy only if you have a proper understanding of the basic concepts you will be able to solve them so yeah guys thank you so much for watching this video keep learning keep preparing bye bye